It's Monday night, Big Footy Tiger Cast. We're back for another show. First spin for the season. And it's good to be uh, talking about some positivity for, for once. But with positivity, it does also come some uh, some negative vibes, which we will get to shortly. But CB, how are you, mate? What's going on? Welcome. Oh, mate, just uh, still basking in the glow of a magnificent performance um, by the Tigers yesterday. So, yeah, terrific. And EJ, welcome to you, mate. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, going really well. Uh, I'll be the first to uh, put my hand up and say I didn't think we could do it, but I'm sitting here very happy that we did. I think uh, I think as a collective show, we almost owe an apology. What's, what have I done, CB? Have I done something? Uh, CB knows. He knows. Okay. That's why he didn't go to the ground on the weekend, Michaels. He thought, that's it, we can't win. He had tickets. He didn't go. He was sending oh. a message saying, I'm so glad I stayed at home. And then the game happened. Oh, Just no. send you a text. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong, CB. No, once I saw Dusty was out, I thought we're, we're absolutely cooked. <laughs> well, look, I mean, to be fair, all all of us on the show last week, n- no one tipped Richmond, and we we certainly <laughs> said Sydney were going to belt us. Um, and I think, for all intents and purposes, our comments were valid at that point in time given how we were playing and how they were playing so always nice to be proven wrong though in those in those instances it was um let's be serious mate it was um i think i i know i told age or you like anything under 10 goals was going to be like with the team we've named you know you think what 10 blokes 15 under under games experience against what was touted as the best team in the competition um just made the win all the more remarkable. Yeah, I mean, look, Sydney are obviously a little bit off, but you've got to take your chances when another team is not performing at their at their peak. And we did that. Our pressure was outstanding all match. It's back to where it was. I know that there was um, – I was getting messages that it was north of 220 at some point. So we kept the heat and it paid off. Yeah. It was quite extraordinary. Um... Yeah, I think to uh, JW's point that no one in their right mind would have tipped us. But, you know, here we are. It's It was a stirring win. And the third quarter for me, I'll go through the scoreline first. Richmond defeated Sydney 11-16-82 to 11-11-77 by five points. Uh, Lynch with three, Lafau two, Bolton two, Baker two, Taranto and Mansell with one each. Um, I think I speak on behalf of all Richmond supporters when I say that watching that last two minutes, it felt like I had heartbreak written all over it, that they're going to just jag a cheeky Joe the Goose. And it was, I'm like, it's going to be Papley. He's done fuck all, all game. Yeah. He's going to bob up and kick a jammy winner and uh, it's going to hurt. But thankfully, thankfully that didn't happen. Um, but for me, I think what set the tone, CB, was that third quarter. Our pressure rating was 233, which was, which was literally, quite literally, off the chart, uh, yeah. which is numbers that we haven't really seen since you know 2017 2018 and uh, i don't think a lot of clubs could replicate that kind of number but i suppose it was always a matter of where we're going to be able to sustain it uh, but gee it was good to see that pressure come back it raises a question that we could probably get into before we do a little breakdown um and we it was a discussion point last week so the pressure rating was off the charts because we did have a lot of youth and a lot of speed in that team which meant We were able to push our numbers back. We were able to shut down the corridor, which Sydney were trying to get, you know, the amount of time Sydney were trying to go through that middle to run and gun us. Um, So it really raised – we're an interesting crossroads already now when you look at team selection for the next period of time. Um, That would have been excluding Bolter and Lynch. But when you look at Grimes, Prestia (coughs) – Graham, should they be automatic uh, inclusions into this team now when you've seen what the, the young kids are going to have ups and downs, but you saw the benefits of fresh, young, fast legs in that team. Like defensively, I don't think we miss Dylan Grimes, and I'm sorry, Dylan's a legend of the club, always will be. Um, but, you know, you look at that, you, you, you look at that back along the week. Weekend and know how hard it worked with, with the help of the wingers pushing back in defence. I mean, interesting, interesting times ahead when Hopper becomes fit again. Prestia, all those guys, I think. 
Yeah, I think um, I get 100% what you're saying, and in most cases, I agree with you. Uh, I don't, I think specific, specifically with down back, we've seen what Brown, he looks comfortable very early on, right? And if you play Brown for 10 games and Grimes for 10 games, you might get a better performance out of Grimes for the first 10 games by some small margin. But for those in the last eight or nine games of the season, I think the time and effort we put into Brown now will pay dividends long term. And I think the injuries that have occurred that have been released today by the club accelerate the fact that um, you know it's a really good opportunity to put some time into the kids. I think Graham comes straight back in. He's young enough to still be involved, you know, in five years' time or whatever. But with Prestier and Grimes, you know, absolutely, I think. If they come back in at all, they've got to come back in by uh, doing a bit of time. Uh, and, and how much could they help the VFL program out by spending a couple of games back there and imparting their knowledge? Well, I think that's the flip side of it too. I think if you had a couple of those senior guys back, just getting match fit again, um, what could a guy like Dion Presti in the reserves <laughs> while he's trying to get match fitness to get back in that senior lineup? What could he teach him a call off, et cetera? Um, that, yeah, even Dylan Grimes, that defensive unit. So um, it's, it's an injury. Like I said, I'm not crapping on the guys. When I say it, I'm just saying when you look at what we produce in the weekend with the kids who are young and hungry, there's risks and rewards with that. Yeah, there's a fine balance too. You can't have too many kids because Correct. you have, you have to, because they've yeah. got enthusiasm, but they don't have tank. And yep. it's, it's the last quarter in games where you're going to get burnt a little bit. And we also know that there's going to be ups and downs in performance with young kids for that first 50 games. But you have to play them. We see now with, you know, your mid-tier players like Ross and that, that what consistent football does to them. We see Dow on the weekend played really well. We backed him in, gave him another chance, you know. So, yeah, I get I, I, I'm quite philosophical. The, day, the injuries today have killed the mood a fair bit. Yeah. But it, but it also makes the season very exciting. From We're going to watch some amazing development this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Glenn, I don't think it's that insane of a thought. You've seen what's happened time and time again when we've put Prestia back in and he's tried to build up match fitness. He keeps breaking down. We can't afford that. We can't afford to be a player down quarter one of any yeah. game. Um, and if we've got people who can provide coverage, I think you've got to try and build up that fitness, show that the hamstrings are sticking together for a prolonged period before coming back into the AFL. Unfortunately, at, at his age and with the reoccurrence of injury, um, it might just be what he has to do because you, you can't risk losing players so, so frequently early on in games. And but um, and you have, yeah, it's then you haven't got him in your run down. But you saw this week, like there was a lot of heat on Thompson Dow after the Port game. This is why I was keen to give him another go to see if he could bounce back and. That's what the kids do. And Thompson and Thompson Dow had a very, very good game against a very, very good midfield on the weekend. I thought he was terrific. Um, so some players had some pretty good games. Morris Rioli Jr., who I've been backing in. Now, I want to take umbrage to someone on Twitter who tried to call me out because I was disappointed that he missed a clutch shot at goal that we had serious momentum with. Like I had about 40 positive tweets about everything else, and he picked that one out. But I've been in Maurice Rioli's corner for quite some time now, defending him that... His pressure game is kind of, an, I dare, dare I use this word, the barometer for us. But I thought he and Mansell were, were, worked very, very well together. Not only their hunts for the ball when it was loose, but their hunts for the man with the ball and even just pushing over to that next player. So when they switched the kick out, they were kind of able to man the mark quick enough that they couldn't play on quickly, which holds them up, which gives us time to set up down the ground. I think that, that actual part of the game is undervalued by a lot of people, being able to man the mark quickly on a switch of play. And they did it really, really well. Uh, the other thing that I noticed massively with Morris Jr. is he actually um, he actually took on a couple of really dangerous kicks. Like he, he usually plays it fairly safe, but he was taking those forty-five degree kicks into the middle. I think he had three cracks at it. He missed one. I'm okay if they try and take that high risk kick and it doesn't come off because it's showing good good intent. But he nailed two of them and opened up the entire ground and we went on to score. So. Some really good signs from um, from Morris Jr. And I think Mansell, well, for both of them, it was easily their best games for the club, I think. Yep. I said that to, today to CB, that that was MJ's best game. 
Um, and Mansell, he's a little junkyard dog. Um, I think he's going to end up sort of, for us, being a, a slightly mil, a more skilled version of a, of a Castagna. He's, he is an absolute junkyard dog. He loves a contest. And, um, yeah, he's got to clean things a little, uh, up a little bit, but his pressure's off the charts. He was, he was fantastic. Um, he, he, yeah. He's never going to – Mansell's never going to be an A-grade footballer. No. But not everyone not everyone in that 23 that takes a field every week is going to be an A-grade footballer. But by geez, I tell you what, he's probably got the biggest set of balls in the whole team, though, as well. Like he um, – Yep. By geez, he competes and, and, and you need those blokes. He goes where Angels fear to tread. And Aish found it out, you know, even though he got suspended for three three games last year, Aish found out this guy does not shirk a contest. He's magnificent. I tell, you might be an a, I tell you who might be an A-grader, though, in time. Seth, Seth Campbell. Campbell. Well, <laughs> sorry, yeah. um, I, was, I was talking uh, to someone earlier today. It was his third game of AFL, right? He, he was, apart from the fact that, as I've said in previous uh, iterations, you know, his positioning's elite and all that sort of stuff, and he makes the right decisions early, he's very composed, he clocked up the third most case for the game for us. Imagine he when really? he gets a chance. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Wow. Tarantino was obviously number one, but uh, he was number three for us for, for case covered, I think behind Taranto and McIntosh. So, um, oh, I'm really, I'm really going to enjoy watching this. And I'm claiming he's my boy. He's mine. <laughs> <laughs> you've dropped. You've, you've dropped. Um, Kapow. You've dropped Kapow. Mate, I've, got, I've, mate, I've got. I've got many boys, but uh, <laughs> I, he's. He's. He was really. He's going to be really fun to watch. So, again, we had this. Uh, EJ and I had this discussion today on Seth Campbell, and someone mentioned Kane Lambert before. But we think Seth Campbell has the ability to be a faster version of Kane Lambert long term. Now, this kid at ground level is clean. He clearly. Like that one hand pick up in the last quarter, like this kid's got some serious skills. However, the debate is I think he could become a very good midfielder, but I, I think we need to let him go this year on the flanks and let him learn his craft and get the hang of it. But I think long term, this kid could definitely play midfield for um, the Richmond Footy Club. I think he's got some serious uh, smarts about him. It's just a genuine diamond in the rough. Like uh, that. It could come be one of our best picks for quite some time if he keeps um, tracking the way he is. Um, Miller and Young, I thought, held the own down back reasonably well. Um, I think Young maybe got caught once with the ball, but you know he typically will play within his limitations. And I, I thought the back line did a super job again this week, um, given we we're probably a little bit undermanned. We only conceded what sub seventy points. Yeah, uh, well, 77. They yeah. scored 77. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, young Brown, who I want to see him stay in, he doesn't mind uh, biting off a bit when he takes a kick, does he? Mm. That's He's... good. I mean, yeah. yeah that's that, good. Because then if you've got Short, Rioli and Brown, and Vlossen's not afraid to have a dip either, but a few more who are okay to try and take on a, a more difficult kick, if it comes off, it, it just adds another weapon. Oh, uh, now, oh, oh, no, oh, if we're gonna if we're gonna talk players, you've got to give uh, Vlosten some big ups. That was just insane. Best on ground by a country mile, by miles. And I'll, Taranto will probably get three on Brownlow night, but Vlosten was huge. Uh, Thirteen marks, fifteen intercepts, five hundred and seventy-seven meters gain, three inside fifties, seven score involvements. 13 pressure acts, that's all fantastic. 29 disposals, 23 by foot, at 100% efficiency. It's yeah. just nuts. He was immense. That's scary numbers. He's no Tom, he's no Tom Stewart. Or he's Burn no Darcy Byrne-Jones. Oh, well, Tom Byrne Stewart's Jones. a very, very good player. That's probably a bit unfair, but yeah, let's whack Darcy Byrne-Jones. Oh, listen to you, you <laughs> sick man. You make me sick. Just get into someone. Just get into someone for once, will you? Yeah, Nathan, this is kind of what we're sneakily alluding to. The fact Vlossen hasn't got an All-Australian blaze was beyond me. He's been doing it for years. Agree. Agree. He was monumental. Um, there was a few times when Sydney got on fast breaks in the last quarter, and I thought they were out the back. I thought they were away, and then all of a sudden Vlossen pops up, intercept mark, back we go the other way. I don't know whether he's going to be able to get that much leeway going forward. Like Teams are going to smarten up to that for sure. They're not going to let him just sit back and do that again, but... Um, no, he was he was super good. It was yeah. 
And how good was it? And how good was it to get a totally undeserved free kick in the last two minutes? <laughs> yeah, After... it was a bit of a it was a soft one. <laughs> oh, there was nothing there at all. <laughs> but they missed about four holding the balls from thirty five meters out at our goal in the same quarter. So oh, look, I, even, I think sorry. it was a really well umpired game. We don't well, need to I... talk about the umpires. We for for, for once. For the first show in about four years, we probably don't have to talk about umpires. For no, but it was funny that he got asked the question. It was very funny. And his answer was pretty blunt and straightforward too. That we he pretty much did the same thing we've all been saying. Well, we hardly yeah. get him, but um, no, it was it was good, very very good to hold on. Uh, the and we won the free kick count by one, which none of us tipped either. Uh, another player who I think and I think we've all agreed that he's going to develop better in the AFL than VFL is Sonzi. I know he didn't have massive, massive numbers, but my favourite moment from his game was when the heat was on. I'm not sure if it was late in the third or the last, early in the last quarter, but he was one on two at the top of the 50 metre line with a, a quick kick that was going his way. And he was well outsized, but he was able to fight hard enough to bring the ball to ground, dove on it, hit it out and broke even. And we, we, got, a, we got a stoppage or a shot at goal, something like that. But the fact that he was able to, to to fight that fiercely, being that outsized, um, was a really, really good sign. And I, I seriously think that he's going to develop far better playing senior football than at VFL. Must stay in the ones. Must. Yep. Hard agree. Uh, who else right here? Bolton. Bolton had, a, I think, one of his best games for the year as well. Um, well ironically... Ironically, though, he seems to play his best football when Dusty's not playing. And I don't know whether this is because he's at more centre bounces, whether he feels, I don't know, more obligation to step up and be the man. I'm not too sure what it is that makes it happen. But every time Dusty's not playing, um, Bolton has a, a ripper game. And even the fact he kicked the clutch goal around his body, you know, to to keep it keep momentum going for us was, was really, really good. So shout out to Bolton because I know, you know, we have questioned, I suppose, his... Lucky consistency in games, which has been prevalent, but the game against the Swans, he was very good. And I'll, I'll retract what I might have said about him at the start of the last quarter when he bit off a little more than he could chew and um, that ball got smothered and went down and cost us a goal. I, that I was still seriously lucky. unlucky. I retract my emotional remarks at that stage of the game. <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, our other man, LaFowle, two goals. Hand on heart, I was a little bit surprised he was picked for that game, um, not through any fault of his own, but really, really like pumped for him that he played. And his first goal was a ripper, the old banana from the boundary. Uh, I, I thought he showed some good signs, and I dare say that if he's not sore or injured, he's probably going to play a, a fairly key role for us in the you know the coming eight to ten weeks. He shouldn't have had to do a bloody banana from the boundary. I know. At- <laughs> I thought he actually socketed off the ground. I th- or and or he was in the goal square anyway. No, he was he was on the edge. So I could see it being a forty-five, but he wasn't hard up against the boundary. That was ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, and the other roost, the other roost from outside fifty, beautiful kick. Good Never kick. Like miss. Oh, very good can, kick. He competed a lot better this week. I think. I think last week, um, obviously, he didn't have the greatest game, but um, being a sub, then not being a sub, and then the stuff in the change rooms and that, it was all a bit, maybe a bit much. But he he was just a good even contributor. And um, yes, he will get more time now that uh, our thirty seventh key position player has gone down. He's he's going to take time to grow into his skin a bit, isn't he, Lafau? Like he, he's yeah, he, he's so raw. Like he got his raw, but <coughs> he's competing. Hit the scoreboard. What more can you ask? Eh? And you know, all of these games are massive learning experiences for him as well. So he's only going to be better for it. Um, but he's just, I suppose, now being thrust into the heat of it with uh, not much support around him in, in ways of experienced players. So we'll see how he goes. The last one I want to ask about is not on the list, uh, which seems to have divided a lot of people, was Marlon Pickett's game. Um, look, there's no there's no denying that we've had mixed opinions. I've probably been backing him in to play on the wing until someone can replace him. I don't think anyone can just yet. But I thought he was, again, good when the whips were cracking with some, some key disposals, a good chase down tackle as well. Um, in you know, in a time where tackling for us hasn't been our strong suit, it was nice to see him stick a good one. I was well. I've been critical of Marlon for for the first you know three games, and um, 
he played fantastic. So I'm so glad he made me eat some humble pie. And um, I really hope he backs – him and even Camden McIntosh has copped a lot of heat this week. He's the whipping boy this week. Um, but the work those two boys did, McIntosh and uh, Marlon, defensively getting back and helping the backs and then pushing forward, like they were critical critical to our success on the weekend. Um, and anyone thinking that McIntosh or Marlon's getting dropped this weekend, forget it. <laughs> they'll be they'll be lining up in the in the twenty three for sure. So well, uh, yeah. we've already got three changes from last week with injuries <laughs> and suspension. So Correct. I don't think anyone else is going to be getting dropped. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Sarge wants to know what do we think of Jack Ross's game in the guts. I think Ross has had a, a good season so far. It's felt seamless. Like you haven't gone off oh, shit. You know, there, there's Jack Ross. What's he going to do? He seems to always make the right decision with ball in hand now, which is really really good. Yeah, well, he's still hopper. Oh, so you go, you go. Oh, I don't, look, Ross is never going to be a superstar. He's going to be a good, solid, C-plus, B-grade player. He's going to play a bunch of games, and he's going to do a role for us every single week. If we can just keep the expectations at that sort of level, he's fine. He's he's going really well. He's going really well this year. Like you said like, before, CB, not everyone has to be an A-grader. Well... Keep in mind, before Hopper was our best midfielder until he got injured, you'd probably argue that Jack Ross has been our most consistent midfielder um, this season now that Hopper's out. He's had, oh. he's had four really good games. Oh, yeah, okay, over the whole season, yeah. Yesterday, yeah. probably, Timmy Boy was pretty decent. But but again, but Ross has been consistent for four games. He's been very consistent. Yeah. 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 Yep. Now, I think a few people have obviously noticed that we've had a slight change in play style. So I want to see what you guys... I know Grok raised this one in our PM, but he, he obviously can't make it with his internet being out. Um, oh, what was kicked his $9,000 computer, did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what have been some of the main things you've noticed in terms of the game style change for us? I, I think the main things he wanted to point out, if you want to expand on them, uh, were that we took a lot more of those 45-degree kicks into the corridor, which we haven't typically done. Um, and our, we won the march. We took 110 marks for the game, which is something that we very, very rarely do. So it maybe almost showed a bit of a plan B and a, a want to maintain possession. I think what we saw again on, on Sunday as well was a bit of tempo footy. So all of a sudden we were prepared to control the ball and slow things down a little bit. And <laughs> again, again, it was good coaching, good game day coaching. We were able to stop Sydney, as much as we were looking to go inside as well, we were able to stop Sydney using the corridor as much as they wanted to as well. So the, the defense, the defensive aspect of our of the work rate was fantastic. But then, yeah, you're right. We were, and we were also, we did a couple of really nice switches, a couple of um, use right across the ground to open up the um, fat side of the ground as well. So there's some really good um, ball movement, I would say. Yeah, and I mean... Far be it from me to use lazy tropes that other people in the media have used over the last seven or eight years, but we're playing with a bit more control and a little bit less chaos. Yeah. You know? It's just finding the balance, it, isn't it? Yeah. And I tell you what, I actually said at half time yesterday um, to my son, because, you know, not still not confident that we were going to be in the game or whatever, I said, no matter what happens, this has been a really good game to watch. I really like the style in which we're playing. So it's attract it's attractive as well. Yeah. yeah. Not not that that's important. Yeah. Winning's more important, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean though. Uh and finally to round it out, obviously Uze's first winners coach, which is a super effort. But Kegs, this was uh, another good point that um I had mentioned as well earlier on uh, before we come on on air that 10 players under 50 games, and I think Nick had mentioned to me on the phone today that um, across about 10 of them, they might have averaged 16 games or less. So the amount of youth we had out there, and oddly enough, in recent times, we got slapped a little bit for our, our lack of talent from the younger brigade, and then all of a sudden we're top four in the VFL, and we're winning games with the youth in the seniors who have replaced, who had to you know come out of the second. So... It seems to be flowing down quite nicely, um, and the young kids seem to be doing a, a really good job. And they, those close games are worth almost 10 games of experience, aren't they, in some ways? Yep. 
Yep. Yep. Um, all right, so there were some negatives to come out of the game, which you know we didn't even get we didn't even get to celebrate for 24 hours before we were all just flat as attack this afternoon. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of us were hoping this was an April Fool's Day joke, but unfortunately it wasn't. With Tom Lynch, torn hamstring tendon. So the muscle <clears throat> itself was actually okay. So the rehab work and the stuff he'd done there was fine. But apparently the push or the shove he got and the motion in which it you know, propelled his leg and he landed or whatever, tore the tendon, which is going to need surgery. So we're looking at, I mean, it says eight weeks, but I'm, I'm going to say that's 12 to 14, if I'm being honest. Uh, and Noah Bolter and MCL out for five to six weeks which happened very late in the game too, which is shit, shit news. Um, if there was two players, gents, that you wouldn't you wouldn't have wanted to have missed games anytime soon, structurally, I'm tipping it was those two. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I was speaking to my D's mate tonight before I came on, and um, I said, you know, that's Gibkus, Bolter, and Lynch down. Imagine if we took Lever, May, and Petty out of your side. You know, like, it's, it, from a structure point of view, it just kills us. But... You know, we get we're gonna we're gonna see now um, some Kaziski, some Ryan, some Lafau. So we've just got to make the best of a bad situation. And as I said, it probably accelerates the what time we're gonna put with the kids. Anything to add to that one, CB, with the injuries? Nah, flat as a pancake, mate. Just, yeah, it was just shit. It really, uh, I was pretty pretty savage <laughs> mid afternoon when. When I read it, there's just nothing more you can say. It's just terrible, terrible luck. We'll just get to the change a lot at the moment. <clears throat> yeah, exactly right. We'll get to the changes later that you know to try and replace those two. Um, but look, it does create opportunity. Although there's a balance between having opportunity and having a bucket load of kids out there with no experience, support around them, throwing them to the wolves because that can actually be counterproductive. But in this instance, we don't really have a choice. So we'll have to just make do with what we've got. Uh, and the other one was Baker obviously copped a week for that bump on Malikin. Uh I'm probably with EJ a little bit. I, I kind of thought he was going to get two, maybe even to three, just based on how how hard the AFL are cracking down on head knocks. Um, I don't think he was trying to spoil that ball. That arm movement at the end, I believe he was trying to actually, I don't want to say hit him in the head, but I reckon he was trying to forcefully hit him in the chest. At minimum, I don't think he was trying to spoil the ball. I'm taking rose-colored glasses off of that one. 100%. Um, so I think the one week, take the one week, but then upon reading the grading of how the AFL graded it, it, it I think we can now actually argue it down to potentially to low impact because Malik can yeah. get playing like straight away. Well, so the way it was right. graded actually helped us. Yeah. I think yeah, you should have got a fine. Oh. <laughs> what, reckless, I, what I will say, what I will say is the... The Essendon Nuffies trying to compare that to Peter Wright are just complete lunatics. It was not the same as Peter Wright. I know you were a bit butthurt about him getting four weeks, but that wasn't the same action. Um, the intent was maybe marginally similar, but the outcome, which is the weighted weeks that go on top of it, were not there because Malikin got up straight away. Put a Collingwood um, jumper on him, mate, and he doesn't get suspended like Maynard. Oh, I mean, no, you've got Peter the, rules, and- the rules are different. Don't be a Nuffy. Don't yeah, be a Nuffy. The- and I'm on record as saying I'm fine with the Maynard one because he was competing for the ball and it was incidental contact in a footy act. Um, and that's that yeah, okay. Blake's career. Bra- yeah. Brayshaw changed direction. If Brayshaw doesn't change direction, he doesn't get hit in the head. He changed direction after he kicked. Well, Maynard was it in the like anyway. I agree to disagree, gentlemen. I bid I you think, fair day. I think Ralphie has hinted at that we are going to look to appeal. I think based on how they've graded it, and the fact that Malikin kept playing, I think it's a smart decision to try and get it downgraded to a fine because we we honestly can't really handle many more players being out, to be honest. Well, so, you know you're yeah, a bit chance of, when bit of a bummer. Ro- Robbo, Robbo on 360 is, uh, reckons we should appeal on, on the grading, apparently, according to Struggle Town there in the comments. Um, yeah, well. So, yeah. And just on um, a couple of people who have mentioned in the comments, I've noticed, and we've got to give some props here to Adam Uze. Uh, he's... Proving he's a really good match day coach. He's been flexible. He's made changes in numerous games. You know, Sydney got a run a couple of times there. <laughs> um, I'm not... I, I think I, I said to uh, CB early on, uh, he also... He, I said to CB early on, I wasn't 100% convinced on Uze 
because he didn't gave, give me confidence when he speaks. I think he's relaxed as well after a couple of weeks and he sounds really natural now and I can see it. But he's a good match day coach. I think we're pretty lucky. We've got the right one. The board got it right again. Well, the reality is reserves haven't dropped a game and we were a couple of minutes away from being two and two if we had been able to get up against uh, Carlton. So with all the injuries and all the adversity we faced. So clearly he's got engagement from the players and clearly something's working at the club. I think in the same breath, a shout out to Steve Morris as well for the job he's doing with the VFL boys to given that he's losing players at a rapid rate of knots because uh, the ace, the senior guys are going down, I think he's doing a fantastic job too. So if it's filtering down, and uh, as, as a few people mentioned in chat, it's the fact that he's got a plan B, which I think a lot of us felt maybe Dimmer didn't have so much of. He, he was very, this is going to work. We're just going to keep persisting. It'll change. And a lot of the times it did. There was many years in a row that that, that worked. But as the game evolved, and this is not a pot shot at Dimmer, but as the game evolved, I don't think his game plan went with it. He still wanted it to, to run a certain way because it had worked for so long, which makes sense if you're him. But um, yeah, it's good to see Uze have yeah so, some balls to throw magnets around, even though he's probably been a bit hamstrung by it. And Struggle Town saying that your D's mate reckons they should have kept Uze and got rid of Goodwin. That was a very common comment I was seeing from Melbourne people when we signed him. They were gutted that they lost him. So uh, I'm, I'm backing their judgment in of knowing the work he did in the box. Um, yeah, so that, that puts me at ease a little bit. Well, we weren't happy about Leuven. We knew we'd lost a good one in fly, didn't we? 100%. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and Kingsley. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, swings and roundabouts. So, Aaron, to answer that one, do the VFL boys train with the AFL boys? Someone may be able to fully correct me if I'm wrong, but the AFL listed players will all train together. I'm not sure if the VFL specific or top-up players train with the AFL main group. I think they do their sessions at night because a lot of those players, they actually work during the day, so whether they're chippies or carpenters or whatever it might be, and they come play some VFL football um, you know, on the weekend. So I, I don't think those top-up guys would train with the AFL Lads, but the obviously the AFL listed players run around with the main group on a on a weekly basis. Um. All right, so, or oh, hamstring by yeah, very good, Jim, very good. I oh, know. Sorry, sorry, oh, I shouldn't have said hamstring. I oh, know I've probably just jinxed it. Speaking speaking of injuries, now we are going to get into this preview of the St Kilda game, but before we do that, just with in relation to this week. I've got a hat, and we've actually got some names in here for some people who can maybe fill in at the forward line position this week. So we might need a bit of a rotating roster. Uh, so if uh, if Nathan Nathan Schman could be available for for this round, um, who else we've got in here? Brady Manders, if he can be available for the following rounds. Like we're honestly getting to that stage where we've got to draw names out of a hat to be able to find people to fill spots. It's getting absolutely crazy. But the Saints coming off a loss, a narrow loss to Essendon. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game. It was already gonna be a tough game because for whatever reason, St Kilda notoriously match up well on us. And I know that there's a bit of a a bit of a Ross Line effect here too, that we don't go well against Ross Line coach side, stemming back many, many years. Um so we'll start off with the changes. Too so far, the too far, RFC center, too far. Well, yeah, we've got is Tyrone Vickery available? Group is Groupie getting a run. Oh, Jacob Bauer, just quickly on Jacob Bauer. Um, I don't think it's injury. I think there's some other reason, like personal reasons why he hasn't been available, but I think we leave it at that. And I suppose when the timing's right, he'll be back in because I think he will walk straight back into the AFL side at, at this rate. Um, um, yes, hopefully, yes, he gets a good And soon. secondly, for those who are thinking Cumberland, Cumberland cop copped a decent, pretty big corky early in the Rezies game. Um, which hindered, hindered him quite a lot on the weekend. And I think he only racked up about six touches. So if – I'm not sure the other two blokes, but he's certainly not in my ends based on the fact that he, he, he copped a knock as well. And uh, he may be a little bit sore, to be honest. Yeah, I, I tagged Richo and Jack Rewald on Twitter and maybe hinted at them putting the boots on for a John Farnham-esque type last tour to help get us through for this next month. Uh, but with Lynch, Bolter and Baker – Baker at this stage will leave as an out pending appeal, obviously. But with them as the definite outs, EJ, 
Who's coming in? So the names I've got question marks next to, I had question marks next to Dusty, Graham, Grimes, Naismith, Cozzy, Ryan, and McAuliffe. But I really don't know the answers. Um, look, I, re I really, really want to see McAuliffe come in this week. He put in um, another good performance, didn't he, in the VFL? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, look, I, I was a bit surprised that Sonzi played last week. Um, and I'm thinking... Surely they're not saving the McAuliffe debut for when he's over in Adelaide for Gather Round because that's where he's from. That's my little tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. <laughs> um, so we've looked at we've we've lost Lynch and Bolter, so we've lost two talls. So you'd think that we're going to bring in two talls. You've got three talls sitting back there. You've got Naismith, Ryan, and Cosy. Because he hasn't been setting the world on fire, really, has he? Even in the twos. So I'd probably lean to the crayfish and Ryan. Um, and look, is Dusty okay? If Dusty's okay, um, Uze said he's broken the cycle and he trained pain-free over the weekend. If that's the case, well, he's the logical third third replacement. If there's any element of doubt about his calf issue, for God's sake, don't play him. We, yeah. we can't afford another senior player to break down for an extended period of time. Okay. Here's a question. So, JWBH01, no to all of them, right? The issue with that is we can't go in like we're extras from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, a bunch of midgets. We need some tall timber. Someone has to come in. You know, at the, we're just going to have to make the most of a bad situation. No, mate, so, we'll just drop Nick Curvis and ruck with Marlon. <laughs> you know? Well, what, do you set, reckon, what do you reckon? Yeah, what do you reckon, You go, CB. So, Dustin Martin's an automatic in. We all agree on that, yeah? Tick that box? Yep. Okay. Well, assuming there's no calf issue, 100%. Yep. Yeah. So, I would say Dusty in for Baker. Tick. I will go the other way. So... Essendon towed up Marshall going two rucks against him. And Sam, so, so the crayfish in, Nays, in Naismith, 19 disposals, two goals, 17 hitouts. He's actually the guy I would bring in to cover it full forward and back up ruck. So oh, Samson Ryan, to me, isn't quite ready for it yet. So the question I've got, so I've got Dusty Naismith in. As far as the third in that comes, um, I'm spewing, I wish Combo was playing okay. Um, whether LaFowle steps up and they bring in another on ball, I'm, if, I'm not sure. But I think depending on the weather, if the weather's a bit uh, ordinary in Adelaide as well. And, and traditionally, I don't think St. Kilda's got a, an overly big-sized back line either. So you probably could afford, afford to bring in a more medium-sized um, mm. forward as well, which could be an option. So pace around the ball, um, more rotation. So so the only two definites that I've really got in my head are Naismith and Martin. And I guess maybe it is McAuliffe. Maybe he's the third one that comes in. So, so that's probably more the way I'm thinking at the moment, to be honest. I because tend I to agree. If you bring in Naismith and Ryan, we're too slow. We're yeah. too, too lumbersome, too slow at full. So, I think so too. And, and even though Samson Ryan had a, a reasonable game on the weekend, I think he got three goals. Um, I'm a fan of working over Rowan Marshall as well and getting uh, Naismith in. Looking at the St Kilda back line, this is from last week's lineup, so obviously subject to change. But uh, Josh Battle, who's, I would say, medium, he's not, he's big, but he's not, you know, key position tall, big. He's your, what, Same, 193, 195 centimetres? He's, he's your broad type. Yeah, yeah, good. Cool. Yeah, Zane Cordy, Callum Mulkey, Liam Stocker, Jack Sinclair, and Wanganine Malira, who's obviously not key position. Um, so maybe we're not going to be as impacted, and maybe a Naismith LaFau hybrid forward line could work. And I, I don't even care if they don't, we don't need to take 20 marks inside 50 to win, we just need them to bring it to ground. Not, not even against kicking absolute scrubbers inside 50 to make sure they don't intercept market, like what, whatever we have to do. So I think on that basis, and if Dusty's playing deep as well uh, and to be isolated, I'm actually all for, yeah, Anae Smith, Dusty and McAuliffe. I think 
<laughs> I don't think we can hold back McAuliffe any longer. I know he's only he's only very new to the to the club, um, but he's put in back to back very very good efforts at VFL level. And if the Baker outstands, um, then it, I think it's time to see him. Although the, if Jack Graham's available, I'm not sure how that throws a something yeah. into the mix as well. I mean, does Graham get the nod ahead of McAuliffe? Maybe based on exposed form, maybe not. Maybe that they does, go with the, the guy who's in form. Does Graham come in? And one of the blokes like um, who was our sub on the weekend? Uh, Banks. Does Banks go out for Graham? Yeah, possibly. And Phil, this is a good point too. Naismith is stronger than Ryan, and that, that's my biggest yeah. issue with with Ryan at the moment. Is he's pushed off? Like he was pushed off the ball by Maynard um, in the practice game, so he's getting shifted quite easily. Whereas Naismith is a bit of a brute. Like he and Nank. In my in my view, are both hard asses when it comes to tackling. They will crunch people, and he is not afraid to lay a big tackle as well. And I, I think that's a good thing to have. Julian Powell just did the dimensions of the Norwood Oval. He, he, his comments just flicked up. So my question to Julian, you, yeah, my question to you, Julian, how is that compared? Those dimensions compared to the MCG? Are the wings a bit tighter, or how, how does that work? That's what I couldn't. That's what I, I don't know with that with that with that um post. And if Norwood is smaller, then yeah, it should help. And I agree, Jane Drayson, give Graham some uh, some match fitness as well, because we don't want it. We we don't need any more any more injuries. So Norwood very skinny from Julian, thirty one okay. meters skinnier than the MCG. That's it's a substantial difference, isn't it? It's actually quite yeah. a large, very quite large variation. And thank you for uh, that too. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's yeah. that's great. That's yeah. that's good to hear because yeah. you know obviously we don't play at Norwood very often. So it's going to so, be. A- it's going to be a, a, a contested game because yeah. you're not going to be able to uh, – there's not going to be the space to uh, to swing the ball, you know, to switch and stuff like that. It's going to be very clogged up. It's going to be very clogged up. So that, that even further bring, changes – makes me think that only Nate, only Nate Smith or Ryan don't bring in both. Yeah, I agree. Just look at how much better we move the ball as a team on the weekend, not having that extra tool. It made such a difference. And I agree, Sibby. I think that Naismith can play as a second forward, you know, for the sake of a, a month or so. I think it can work. Someone, Andrew Adams saying Windhager's out. Yeah, he did say that. I did see that. What's he out for? Did he, what happened? Did he get injured or something? If someone Just could that... give the information on that, that'd be great. He's, he's, that would... he's really stepped up this year. Yeah. yeah good kid. Yeah, yeah. Good kid. So where's the game won and lost? I know. Notorious, they're going to stay in the midfield, and and Rowan Marshall for them is a massive, massive part of uh, winning or losing. So our younger midfield brigade's got a bit of work to do, and I, we need. I think we need Bolton to stay in the midfield. Like if Dusty comes in, I think we do need to leave Dusty Ford more and have Bolton do his thing in the midfield. He's more beneficial there. Yeah, it it's going to come down. Can we stop Rowan Marshall? He gives. If you can, if you can, if you can stop him or negate him, he gives him so much drive because he's a bloody good footballer. Um, and and again, uh, is King suspended or is he back this week? He's back. So Mate, King's he back plays like wing here every time he sees a Richmond jumper. We gotta, we gotta stop him as well. Well, hopefully, the narrower ground and the more clog, clogged up it is means that the that there won't be the open service and the leading lanes so that. It's going to be more dropped on his head, therefore you'd think that gives us time to set up. So, you would think you would think that Miller has to take King and uh, Young takes Memory. That makes sense to me as matchups. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think that's fair enough. And the, the other thing, the other reason why I think having this fleet-footed younger brigade brigade in helps is they've probably got more work rate and more legs to get back defensively to stop that easy transition going forward where, you know, King might have an easy ball coming inside 50. If we're able to get numbers back and the wingers get back, um, I just think it works so much better to be able to not, you know, not let teams have their way with us. Yeah. Yep. Now, the, the pressure from last week, EJ, obviously was a huge highlight for us. The million-dollar question is, can, can we replicate that same kind of pressure for a, another game? Well, we have to. If we if we want to be in the contest, we have to because, um, you know, they've got they've got very damaging uh, run from half back 
obviously with uh, what's his name, Mullet Head, um, the Mullet bloke, Sinclair. Sinclair, okay. Yeah. Thanks for helping me out, fellas. <laughs> uh, just leave me hanging. Sinclair <laughs> and uh, and Wanganeen Miller, are, you know, they've, they've got some amazing drive. So we, if we can if we can put that frontal pressure on and stop the the flow of the drive from half back, that'll have a massive impact on the game. So yeah, we have to we have to bring the pressure. I, I think too the, the Saints the Saints like that in tight handball game. They like to flick it around a lot too, don't they? Yeah. So if you can close the space on them, um, we could get a lot of um, a lot of turnover on that as well. They really chain through the middle a lot like that. What about uh, what about Jack Higgins? We're going to see any love lost for Higo on the weekend. It's always I always find that whole interaction fascinating to watch. That's the only reason it's a pity that Grimes won't be playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. <laughs> He's and Jack, uh, gotten Jack is in a spray normally as well. All right. Well, I mean, based on all these happenings and the outs and things like that, I'm kind of still fairly buoyed that we're we're a chance for this. I know, you know, as long as you turn up, you're a chance anyway. But um, it's going to be interesting to see how much confidence we take out of the win against Sydney and how much energy it maybe took out of us or maybe it's reinvigorated us. Who knows? But selection is going to be very, very interesting. So with that said, let's get a tip, including margins from you two gentlemen and anyone else in chat, send through your tips. We'll pop them up. Uh, CB, what's the tip, including margin? I just want to see, to be honest, with all the injuries and things we've got, I just want to see a competitive effort. So to me, it's kind of irrelevant at the moment. I just want to see the kids keep improving Keep getting game time. This this is a long term investment now. The rebuild's on, um, so either way, we win, fantastic. If we lose, we've got great draft picks. We don't lose either way. So go Tigers. Yeah, Saints by twenty six. Uh, we're blowing out a little bit late, but I just same as CB. I just want to see a competitive effort. We've been really good for. Most of every game this year, there's only been a couple of patches where we've been down. As long as we keep this, this effort up every week, it's going to be a fun year. So, if we can bring that same pressure for a quarter and a bit, it could be enough to um, to get a nice lead. And the grand dimensions make things very interesting. I actually think it's playing into our favour a little bit. Um, so I'm probably going to I might actually tip the Tigers by eight points. I don't know. I was just really really buoyed by what I saw against the Swans. It was completely unexpected and I just hope they've got a bit of a taste for it. Um, the only way I can see it backfiring is if we bring in, and I, this is not disparaging to these players, but if we bring in like Grimes or some older players who might slow things down again from a speed perspective, we need to keep that fleet footedness about us. Um, I, I just want to see players like Mansell and, and Morris Rioli back it up with another really good game because you know, they were super on the weekend and I'm really hoping that they now get a bit more of a sense of belonging uh, and, yeah, they can they can kick on with it. And hopefully yeah. we can get Bloody Baker off as well. That'd be good too. But but also, the Saints are a massive downhill skiing team. If they get their tails up, they're really hard to stop. But if you do apply pressure to them, they normally um, choke a bit too. I disagree with that. They have changed remarkably under Ross and they've been yeah. under the cloche in a couple of games and they have... They have turned games around mid-game, and Ross is coaching really, really well. He I suppose is you're going to watch this. You got your St Kilda streak DVD to watch on after this, mate. mate don't no. try and Tiger seventy one me with some crap other club. I actually just <laughs> am not that bad that I can't give credit where credit's due. Ross is coaching really well at the moment. Really well. Nah, stuff him. Saint Farrell, uh, stuff him. It'll be, haven't done anything for one hundred and fifty years. It'll be a big test. Um, and look, at least we know that no one's got a home ground advantage being in Norwood Oval. So that's something to uh, to take as well. But Gather Round kicks off this week, Thursday night. Should be interesting to see what the crowds are all like over in Adelaide. It sounds like a shitload of people are going over uh, as well. And coming up during the bye week, Peter Wilson will be joining us for part of the show, which I think uh, buys round six, I believe, from memory. Um, nice. So we'll have him on for 20 or 30 minutes. So I might lean on you two gentlemen for some questions and things to talk about because um, you may know more about him than I do. And then... Um, you calling yeah. us old? 
I'm calling you older than me, not saying old, but uh, <laughs> but older than me. Um, Reese, is T's coming back soon? Not honest. The answer is not too sure. It all comes down to him and how he's feeling. So the the seat in the spot is always open, which you know we've said all along. But he's still going through his rehab and getting himself right um, to get his. I don't life back on track might seem like a really excessive thing to say, but it's been it's been a big thing for him. Like it's gone on for over a year. So. His time and energy needs to go into him and getting himself right. But um, yeah, he will he will be back on as soon as he is physically able to. I can assure you. No trade so, news at the moment. Oh, well, Ivan. Anyway, I'm not sure if you guys do, but I don't. So so let's be honest. I know you just said about Tiggs, but I just want to be really honest with the viewers right now. It's actually a pay dispute. Tiggs has <laughs> Tiggs, has, Tiggs has got the lawyers onto us, and um. We received a couple of letters from solicitors. Uh, it's getting a little ugly. We've had to re-engage and get legal representation. And Tiggs has always been about the money. That's that's the honest answer, right? And and Grok Grok did fail a second sample test before tonight's show, so we had to tell him that he was a laid out um, just to to save face. Grok's out with hamstring awareness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, thank you, Jess, for jumping on tonight. Much appreciated. Thank you, Darren, for tuning in. We've got over 500 live viewers at the moment. So sensational effort once again. Please make sure that you follow us on, uh, what are we, on Twitter, Facebook. Give us a subscribe on YouTube. We're trying to get towards 1,000 this year. I think we're on 813, roughly. Make sure you get around us. Uh, always happy to engage on all the socials. And thank you so much for everyone's time tonight and, and asking all your questions. And hopefully we can get a nice win this week against St Kilda and climb up the ladder a little bit further. So until Monday night, go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go those Tiger Cubs.